works every time. Look, we have so much going on this morning that I'm going to talk to you for just a couple minutes and let you get back to breakfast. Those of you who read any of the emails know we got a little bit different schedule this morning. Um, first off, I'd like to welcome all these great incubators and accelerators because it's just fantastic. So um, thank you for being here. It was amazing. I thought we'd have six or eight programs here this morning. There are 16 programs. And as they have pointed out to me, there are four others that are not with a booth here this morning. There's Starter at UCSD. There's San Diego Sports Innovators. There's Procopio's Launchpad in Del Mar. And there is, who oh my God, who am I forgetting? Oh, I'll Accelerate IT, thank you. Um, so, you know, there's just so much going on around town. And if you're an entrepreneur, or if you know an entrepreneur, there are so many places to point them to get assistance, mentoring, space, help. So we'll, we'll talk more about that this morning. Um, a couple things I do want to mention. We have a VentureLink program working right now. I think there must be too much venture capital in San Diego because we have TVC capital looking for investments in the software field for companies that have a measly $2 million or more in annualized revenue. And I can't seem to find them. So only conclusion I can come to is that like Embark and Telium and Rome BI, everyone's got enough money. So if you know someone who doesn't have enough money, have them apply for our VentureLink program. Uh, we're going to be doing more of these. You all will get an email from me in the next day or so um, suggesting if you'd like to meet with Salesforce when they're out here next month. So uh, if people are looking for money, because if not, I'm just going to include there's enough and uh, I'll go sailing for a while. Um, let's see, other things to note. Venture Summit. On April 1st, despite what we said yesterday, April 1st, we will open registration for Venture Summit. Um, Venture Summit is going to be terrific. This year, we'll have 700 people. We opened VC registration two days ago. We have 20 VCs already signed up to come to Venture Summit. We should end up with 120 or so. So June 19th, there's a lot of stuff going on that week. It's San Diego Tech Week that week. Uh, Connect will have a demo day that morning. Evo is going to have stuff that afternoon. There's going to be all kinds of events during that whole week. So uh, don't plan on doing anything but networking and getting smarter that week. Um, it'll be very, very exciting. So with that, go ahead, enjoy your breakfast, and we'll be back up here in 15 minutes or so. Okay, we're back. We're back. We're on. I know you all are having great conversations. You know, we, we've, uh, we mixed up a little bit last month. We're mixing it up a little bit different this month. After the show this morning, the incubator accelerators are all going to stay here. They have tables and they'll have their signs up even if they took them down so that they can see the program, which is okay. But if you, at, when the show is done, if you want to learn more about a particular program, you just go to their table. They're going to be there. They're going to be, be talking about it. And we won't kick you out until uh, 9.45, 10 o'clock or something. Thank you all for being here once again. Um, for the few of you I don't know, I'm Dave Titus. I'm president of the Venture Group. And I'm happy uh, to be here this morning. Uh, I, I say it each month, but it's really important. We run off of our sponsors and our volunteers. Uh, we have a very small staff. In fact, Nicole, are you here somewhere? There's our staff. So give Nicole a big round of applause. My job is to think up work for Nicole to do. Like, oh, let's have a bunch of incubators and accelerators, and we'll just have four or five or six. Um, and then we get 16. But really, our board really drives 
the program, one of our board members who was going to be our moderator today, oh. Peter Dries, had to go out of town for a family funeral. So he's not here. Uh, Pete is with Square One Bank. They're a full service commercial bank. They can relate to all you entrepreneurs because they're in the middle of an IPO right now, so that's pretty exciting for them. Uh, so they have big capital base, lots of resources, offices throughout the country in Austin, Boston. Where are those? Wait, were any of those places the number one place in the country to start a business? No! But they have a great office here in San Diego, which was ranked by Forbes magazine as the number one place to start a business in America. Um, Banner list this morning is Cabrillo Advisors, one of our board members, Raquel Cunningham, who's here somewhere. Wave, wave your hand, Rocky, wherever you are, who helped bring us Hera Labs. Oh, were you texting? Okay. No texting. Okay. Oh, you're videoing. Huh? Okay. That's allowed. Um, speaking of videoing, we video these programs. We're trying to get more and more clips up onto the web. We have a venture group channel on YouTube, so if you miss a program, if you want to see Gwen Shotwell's speech from Last Venture Summit, go online. You can, you can see it there. But Cabrillo, right, they do valuations for us, stock options, for like 400, 500 companies, probably one of yours. Uh, Raquel helps you find debt sources like Square One and others, and they do M&A work. So they're here in San Diego. It's really important that you do business who under, with people who understand you and understand what you do. And those are the people who are supporting the San Diego Venture Group. You know, you can, you can deal with a whole lot of lawyers. And, but really, why would you want to deal with someone other than one of our sponsors like Gunderson? Here, Gunderson, Detmer, Villanueva, and Stau. Have I got that right, Kurt? Co close enough? Okay. So, um, Kurt Orshak, Jeff Higgins, uh, great team of people here focused on nothing but the venture capital world. They have 160 attorneys, once again, offices in all those other towns. Um, but most importantly, an office here. So um, they have, you know, companies throughout the country, around the globe. Uh, according to private equity analysts, they do more venture financings than anyone else. So if you need help, call them, call one of our other sponsors. They're here, talk to them today. But really, it's a network effect, and we're seeing the benefits of that here this morning. God, look at all those people who can't even find a place to sit. So we're sorry, when the speakers get up, you come sit down here. But, um, you know, no, we're, you know we're, we, we've got a lot of, of momentum and that's because of, of you all and the board members from the Venture Group. Uh, let's see, do I have anything else? Okay, so what we're gonna do this morning, I'm gonna ask Ephraim Beyer from the EDC to come up. He's gonna tell you a little bit about the EDC, which is one, another one of our great sponsors. And in fact, one of our favorite sponsors because they give Nicole and I a place to live and a place to store all our junk. And we got a lot of it. So, um, but Ephraim's going to tell you a little bit about the EDC. And then we're going to have some commercials today. So we're going to start the program. We're going to have five of our incubators come up really fast and tell you just less than a minute about themselves. And then we'll get on to our program. We'll take a break in our program, have a few more, and we'll have a few more at the end. So uh, we'll try and be done by 9.05. We've got a lot going on this morning. And with that, I will turn it over to Ephraim. Thanks, Dave. Good morning. My name is Ephraim Bicer. I'm with the San Diego Regional EDC. And um, I will tell you that uh, watching Forbes rank San Diego as the number one startup place is really great. What they didn't include is the number of people who would show up at 7 a.m. Uh, for a breakfast to hear from a bunch of other startups. So that's, that's really great. Um, the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation, our mission is to maximize the region's economic prosperity and global competitiveness. And that means a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, truth is that means working directly with companies, companies like yourselves, all day, every day. That's what we do. Um, and a lot of that comes to the fact that the most job creation, the best net job creation we can have in our region comes from startups and it comes from growing companies that are already here. So we spend a lot of our time working with a lot of the, you folks uh, helping you do just that. 
Now, I'll keep my comments very brief because I know the last person you really want to hear from is me. You're all here to hear from these amazing uh, incubators. And that incubator, those accelerators are an amazing part of our startup ecosystem. They're an amazing reason why San Diego is a great place to start and grow a company. Um, EDC is here as a resource. If you ever want to, uh, are interested in the work we're doing, whether it's research, our strategic programs and initiatives, we have a major talent attraction campaign we're about to launch uh, this year. Um, please come find us. We're at sandiegobusiness.org and we'd be happy to work with you. Thank you. All right, Zahn, West, Von Liebig, Startup, SoCal League, come on up because it's, it's time for your part of the show. So, Kathy, where are you? Right well, come on up. Oh, well, come up faster. You know, we've got a schedule to go. You know? Those of you who don't know, first up today is going to be Kathy Poocher, who runs the Zahn Center at San Diego State University. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Pull this down. So the Zahn Innovation Center is located at SDSU. We help students, faculty, and staff from all across the SDSU campus turn early stage ideas into businesses. So sitting over there is the Peter Zahn, the Zahn, so thank you, Peter. And um, he is obviously our donor, thank you. So today we have 38 teams that are under incubation. We provide a supportive environment and a collaborative environment. We have pro bono legal services, business acumen, and prototyping services. All of this is free. We have two desired outcomes with the Zahn Innovation Center at SDSU. The first outcome is the experience. We're hoping to give these students an experience that will complement what happens in the classroom. The second is graduations. Of course, graduations from SDSU, but literally graduations from the incubator, where they can stand on their own two feet. We have two teams after two years that are nearing their graduation. Based on sales and backlog, they'll be moving out to the community and renting their own space. We'll be announcing that hopefully in June. We have one team that's negotiating an investment from their strategic partner. We have three teams, where's Rory, that have their eye on Evo Nexus and hoping to make it in to the August application cycle. And we have one team that's applied to plug and play and hoping to make it to the boot camp in, San, um, in the Bay Area. So that's it. If you guys want to come and talk to us, I think our table will be over there. And um, entrepreneurship is well and thriving at San Diego State. The Zahn Innovation Center is one part of a bigger picture. And thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, go ask Tex about 7 o'clock tonight, okay? All right, you guys, you've got to move quick here because we've got a lot to do. So uh, don't be polite. Sounds good. Uh, my name is Spencer Hutchins. I'm actually the CEO and one of the co-founders of one of the companies inside the West Health Incubator. Uh, we're called Reflection Health. We make uh, digital medicine software, uh, first applications in the space of rehabilitation medicine and reimagining the way that patients do their physical therapy at home using some traditional video gaming technology, uh, uh, specifically Microsoft's Kinect camera. Um, I'm here as a spokesperson for the incubator because we're having an amazing experience. Uh, it's a little bit different of a model than the traditional incubator program. It comes, uh, they're not class-based, it comes as a, a case by case, and it's always linked to an investment by West Health's investment fund, which is a $100 million investment fund with the investment thesis of looking at ways to uh, disrupt care delivery and lower the cost of health care. Uh, so the incubator comes uh, with a commitment from the investment fund, if you've secured that. It's an enormous uh, and beautiful space um, in La Jolla, about 10,000 square feet. There's two companies in there now, um, offers uh, flexible rent as you can start with a, with a desk or a, a portion of a desk and then can expand to, to many offices and or lab space, uh, as well as having a lot of great uh, uh, back-end support, whether it's accounting, communications and PR, uh, or even some sort of regulatory quality and, and some engineering help. Um, um, all of that comes with the phenomenal mentorships as well as the, um, uh, the backing and network of the broader West Health organization. So uh, it's been a great experience over the last year and, and uh, certainly come and uh, if you want to learn more about Reflection, uh, there are other, uh, our other company, Sense for Baby, um, or the Incubator, uh, swing by the table later. Good morning, my name is Rosibel Ochoa and I am the Executive Director of the Von Liebig Entrepreneurism Center at UC San Diego. 
Since 2002, the von Liebig Center has been helping faculty, researchers, and students translate their research to the marketplace through a combination of grants for proof of concept, business mentoring, and entrepreneurial education. 40 entrepreneurial teams have started their own companies, and these companies have raised more than $200 million in capital and created jobs here in San Diego. I am very pleased to announce today that we are launching the Triton Technology Fund. This is an early stage, externally managed fund that is going to be investing in UCSD affiliated startups. So I invite you all to stop at our table, meet five of our, five of our startups, and learn more about the Von Liebig Center. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dan Knudsen. I'm a recent graduate of the Startup Leadership Program here in San Diego. Startup Leadership Program is a highly selective six-month, 80-hour uh, program, global program that's organized into local chapters. Uh, it consists of a bunch of evening sessions and all-day weekend uh, workshops where we uh, have local business leaders, investors, entrepreneurship thought leaders come in and talk to us about their area of expertise and everything from ideation to exit. Um, we dig deeper with presentations, discussions, simulations, competitions. Um, and since 2007, when it, the Startup Leadership Program started in Boston, we've spread to 24 cities and 11 countries. So uh, even after you graduate the program, you're connected to a global network of uh, you know, local entrepreneur uh, chapters in individual cities. We've had um, 1,400 people go through uh, in that time raised over uh, $400 million, their individual companies, and had a number of notable exits. So come talk to us as we're starting to recruit for the next uh, session. Thanks. Hi, my name is uh, Charles Zoll, and I'm from the Wireless Health Hub. And first, I'd like to thank Dave and the SDVG for having us all here. Uh, the timing for this event is perfect for us. Uh, we're announcing the launch of our very first wireless health incubator program. Uh, we're looking for startups in the medical and personal health areas and are develop, uh, that are developing devices, diagnostics, applications, or analytics uh, solutions. Through our programs, we provide resources and capital to wireless health startups, helping them build teams, validate their business models, and connect with investors and, and reference customers. Our goal is to support startups in San Diego, Orange, and Riverside counties and foster a strong startup community that thrives on collaboration between investors, entrepreneurs, universities, and other like-minded organizations. We're also partnering with leading corporate startup initiatives. We've been invited by Dell and Intel to serve as judges for their upcoming Healthcare Pitch Days startup series taking place in Austin, New York City, and San Francisco next month. Our incubator application is now on our Wireless Health Hub website, and we have more information at our table right outside, so please stop by and uh, join us, and our table is right back there in the corner, so thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to ask our panelists to come up. So we're going to intersperse this with a discussion from some entrepreneurs who have been through incubator programs. Uh, leading the discussion today is, in fact, San Diego's one-man incubator. Um, no, you laugh. Neil Centuria has probably started more companies in his office than most anyone here in town. Five, six, seven? Well, if you count the ones you ran into the ground, it's 13. Okay, yeah, so um, <laughs> that. So uh, we're going to chat. We'll take a break in the middle, have a few more uh, incubator announcements, and hang on, because it's going to be a ride. <laughs> well, thank you, Dave, and welcome to all of you. Good to meet you. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. The program is the following. It's about 8.25. We'll do 15 minutes or 20 with the, um, with the panel. And then five other incubators will come up and tell you about themselves. And we'll come back and do 10 minutes uh, more. And then this is the Republican. Watch this. You guys missed that, did you? It's all Republicans in this office. OK. Rand Paul, does anybody? You guys are amazing. So look, what's interesting is this. I, I'm a big fan of this community and of startups and of incubators. And I think everybody, read, of course, read the, the Forbes article. And what I propose the venture group do with some of their money is they buy 500 copies of Forbes and send it to every venture capitalist in Silicon Valley, because <laughs> clearly they don't have a subscription to Forbes. Um, we do have a lot of incubators. And it's really impressive. It tells you something about 
the sort of hunger for entrepreneurship and I think the desire to create things. So I'm pretty impressed. However, it wouldn't be me if I didn't have a slightly dark uh, sentence. And I'll, I'm going to challenge the audience and I'm also going to challenge uh, our panel with the following. We are long incubators and accelerators. And here's the sort of dark sentence, the crusher, if you will. This is grab your ankles. TechCrunch, that minor league blog post, did their own study and analysis recently, like two weeks ago, and they published their list of the top 15 incubator accelerators in the United States. And you guessed it, unfortunately, not one of them is in San Diego. And that is troubling. I'm not sure that, I'm not a devotee only of TechCrunch, but I was troubled by it. I'm going to read you a quick summary of the 10, top 10 from the crunch. Y Combinator, Techstars, Dream Adventures, Angel okay. Pad. Neil and I have been doing this stick for a long time. You, you don't buy it. You that. know why they weren't in there. Why? Because a key tenant of the study that TechCrunch didn't do, I think Kaufman did it, was that the incubator had to take equity in your company. So if you're one of our fine, nonprofit, everything's free incubators, they weren't even considered. That's correct. Okay. So, however, <laughs> this is this is a little like a bit like Jane, you ignorant slut. So, uh, I I agree with Dave. And the question that I'm going to ask you, I mean, remember, I started by telling you I am your fan. The I don't think it was Kaufman, it was Crack Crunch. It doesn't matter. Here's what they did. They did an analysis. And you're right, all of the 15 were for-profit, and they use as their, as their metric uh, how much money raised, companies acquired, and of course it's staggering. It's $7.7 .7 billion raised by the top companies that went through the top 15 incubators. So one of the questions worth discussing today <coughs> is, is a for-profit incubator a better model than a not-for-profit incubator? All 16 of the ones next door are not-for-profit. Two or three of them actually give you money, most of them don't. All of the others do. So I'm not telling you what's better, I'm simply posing a discussion. Having said that, why don't you guys take 90 seconds and tell us what you do, particularly using English for Luddites like myself, <laughs> how long you were in the incubator, sounds like orange is the new black, like a prison. And would you please commit, and would you commit that crime again? So what do you do? We'll start with Al Bashar Bashara. Yeah. Um, so, hi, my name's Al Bashara, for, uh, CEO of Embark. Um, so you know all that crap you get in your inbox every morning? Um, we fix that problem at the source, which is the marketer. So that's the 12 second version of what our company does. Um, you wanted to know... How long, which incubator were you in and for how long? Right, so... <laughs> when did they parole you? Yeah, so went through the Founder Institute three years ago and went through Techstars a year and a half ago. So I'm a little bit of a, I guess, maybe an accelerator junkie. And what was your experience? Spectacular in both. Like, unbelievably spectacular. Life-changing, uh, how I think about business changing, everything changing. Company yeah, changing. We, we, when we got into Techstars, we had a completely different company. We had customers, we had partners, and that <laughs> went away and we started something completely different. Be a little so. bit more specific. Founders Institute was the first one, and yes. then you graduated to Techstars. Yes. Give me more specifics. Um, specific, so... In other words, how many sessions, how many mentors, what did you do, did it pivot? Yeah, so uh, Founder Institute was <laughs> a great learning experience. So I had run a company in the past, years ago, went through Founder Institute, and it's an education, right? And you're introduced to a bunch of fantastic mentors, and you build up your network, and through that education, Every single week, for 16 weeks, I was thinking to myself, yep, I did that wrong, I did that wrong, I did that wrong in all my previous experiences. So that was spectacular. Uh, Techstars is a little different in the first 30 days, probably met with 150 people. Like 150 30 days, mentors. 150 mentors and companies, split so, almost 50-50. Like just diving in, keys to the kingdom opened, go figure it out and make it happen. And so that's where our business changed let's dramatically. Let's pause for one minute. One of the concerns, and I was really fascinated, I, I talked to Dave about this. <clears throat> that sentence that says 150 people met with you in the first 30 days is really powerful. And one of the event, one of, I think, this doesn't mean it's true, that one of the effects of the incubator accelerator, one of its advantages, whether it's a real estate business or not, is the network. 
And so one of the themes, one of the requests in this, in this community is to increase uh, the, the, the network effect. You, didn't, you can't get 150 people, I don't think, in San Diego to come to your 30-day. That was what was amazing. Absolutely. That was a huge kickoff for everything, yeah. Mike. Yes. Uh, Mike Introduce Perry. yourself. I'm the CEO of Crisey Medical Systems. We're a medical technology company. We've been around about four years, um, half of that in uh, the Evo Nexus incubator which uh, one of those, everything's free uh, and quite wonderful in terms of experience. What we do is we are bringing advanced patient safety, uh, documentation, integration with the electronic medical record to the world of IV injectable drugs. So many of you are familiar with automated infusion pumps here in San Diego. Uh, we're doing what infusion pumps do for infused uh, automated delivery of drugs we're doing that for the manually de delivered IV drugs. Um, as far as our incubator experience... Now how, uh, how long were you uh, into Evo? We were in Evo just a little over two years, so we ran our full term. Uh, that's uh, kind of the maximum amount of time that they prefer you be there. In fact, they were very patient with us as we were working on a corporate partnership with a Fortune 500 uh, healthcare company. Uh, that was taking a little longer than we had originally planned and Rory and the team were very gracious to uh, allow us to stay in the incubator, complete that deal and, and now move What was along. the best part of it? Uh, best part of it is the peer relationships that we would develop. You know, there are 10 entrepreneurs like ourselves in there exchanging uh, stories every day, investors that they came across, people that they had met. Uh, undoubtedly, it, almost the experience that you have in college or graduate school. You learn... So you drink a lot. Well, you drink a lot. That's right. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Well, that was... Uh, so what's the worst experience you had at Evo? The worst experience? Um, in other words, if Rory were in the audience, how would you improve things? Oh, I don't know that he is. I, uh, I would say there was almost too many programs you could attend. So you, you felt like you wanted to support and be part of things, but quite frankly, you had a lot of work to do. So, but... That's a pretty, pretty good problem to have, to be able to pick and choose amongst uh, that many good things to attend. Okay. Mitch Thrower is active network and bump and I think five other companies. He's probably, he's run less into the ground than I have, but he's certainly in the same game. Mitch, tell us about which, uh, which incubator you were in and how did you like it and what is bump, bump doing? You could, a little, and I also told me that I should tell you that bump won't be bump in two weeks, so I stole a little bit of his, you can do that. <laughs> Uh, right, so I uh, co-founded a, a while ago, in fact, it was an interesting incubator story. We had received a Dear John letter from one of the local firms in town, Enterprise Partners, years and years ago. And the Dear John letter said, thank you so much, the market's not going to get big enough, we're not there. Um, and then two weeks later, we had been in the Springboard program for Connect. For at that time, the company's name was Racegate, and um, as original corporate iteration. and. Then we approached a gentleman named Ron Taylor through Connect, who ended up um, becoming an advisor. And one of the greatest things you can do in an incubator environment is you change from an ask for money to an ask for help, which is a far less threatening and a far more enthusiastic opportunity for you as an entrepreneur. And sure enough, uh, Enterprise Partners funded the venture with a uh, $5 million even after they sent us the Dear John letter. Um, now, of course, it was a different time. You know, obviously, late 90s were a very different time in a different world. But we went through Connect, and it was, for us, an unbelievable experience because you patched so many things and people and process together. So did Bump go through Springboard? We did. So my second, really, I'm a repeat graduate of the Springboard program. Repeat offender. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we took Bump Network through Springboard and went through all the different panels and met a host of individuals, and then at the conclusion of the process, they actually take you to um, private homes of investors um, in the area where you actually get to meet the investors that are there. And um, one of the things that I thought was really incredible was the number of people that had had the level of experience. Because if you think about everything that's been done before, really, you're just, you know, you're creating new enhancements of ideas, whether it's registering for an event, powering a membership, creating a Band-Aid. And so what you get in an incubator are people who have seen that crazy, youthful, or you know, e e exotic thought of they think that's the best thing in the world and say, well, actually, no, this has been here before. Here's how you can be better. Okay. So let me go back to the hard question, which is, 
one of the raps on incubators to some extent, I don't know that I shared, but it's one of them, is that it's a real estate play, that it's really renting a desk and the mentorship is ancillary. So what was your experience and do you think, would you have delightedly paid and or given equity, like Combinator and Techstars, in each of the incubators that you went through, if it were available, if, if they had offered money and said, made my point, go ahead. And Al, I guess with Techstars you did. Absolutely we did. Um, we gave equity to Techstars, we gave equity to Founder Institute, and I had no qualms doing that. Like, you know, <laughs> the reality is, you talk to a lot of people who've maybe never been through an accelerator, and their first reaction is, wow, they want what percent of my company, and all this stuff. And Usually look, six, by the way. For yeah, the, the, for the math the, is the 25 grand points. against six points. Yep, and for me, day one, no brainer, done, take it. It is so worth it. I would rather have this big, or this much of this big of a pie, as opposed to all of this tiny little pie. He which has actually is, taken the class about which would you rather be rich versus king. Yeah, and, and so the point is, like, it's seriously valuable. Like, it's hard to put into words how this can really, truly change you and your business if you haven't actually gone through it. So. Honestly, uh, I don't know that we would have given away part of our company. We absolutely bought into the notion that Evo Nexus was a totally free pro bono program, and uh, that was very attractive to us. What the real benefit was was the vetting process. When you survive 125 companies that only you know six, eight, ten are ultimately going to get through, the people that come around and look at the group that's in there know that they've already gone through quite a, a review process. So you have already credibility amongst potential investors that this is something I ought to take a look at. Okay, Dr. Uh, Thrower. It may, may be a little controversial here. I wouldn't have given any of my equity away for an incubator. <laughs> you no, wouldn't? No, and I, I, I'm a big fan I, I'd of like incubators. The, from, from one person's perspective, I, am, I, I don't believe, I would not agree with him. So yes, I think that what you have here in the audience is you have one guy who says, gladly, it grew my business multiple fold, and you have a guy who buys his stuff at Costco, and then you have Dr. Sure. Thrower who uh, says, nah, I'm not giving any, and, and I'm surprised. I'd like to challenge you. Sure. I mean, I, I think that to have, now remember, the theory says, I mean, this is my position about incubators, is that the real value is not the real estate. You can get a desk anywhere. What you're playing for is the quality of the mentors and the time they will invest. Now, whether or not this community does enough of it, are there enough mentors, are they good mentors, that's a whole other subject, but it's not a real estate business. So in exchange for the mentors, why would you be so adverse to giving up some points? Well, and I think that the situation is probably unique to someone who's gone through the process a few times. And what you realize is that um, incubators can accelerate and if you're a new entrepreneur or if you're worried about your network um, or if it's you know your first run assembly of these assets I would encourage you to consider anything you can do to get into one of those programs and you know if you look at um, just the, the value increase over time um, the, your confidence level in the value of your equity growth is at least at certain levels you know something you're you going to say what is six percent of your company worth in five years and so it, it depends on where you are as an entrepreneur after four down are. rounds yeah okay so I'm getting the hook right no, no, no. We're, we're it's a mini hook the mini hook okay the mini hook so so our next group of incubators and accelerators come on up quickly because uh, it's your time there. not no not you yet Rory you don't you sit down yeah. okay yeah. No, I, I feel the same way like yeah I don't know the, if I do so again. we're going to take a little commercial break. These guys are going to argue up on stage, which is be really cool. And come on up well, over here. Don't wait. Don't same. be shy because first up is plug and play. So, um, so one minute or less. We don't want to lose the audience. We got a great discussion here, but we want you to know about these programs. So good, mor good morning to all. Uh, great discussion, by the way. Uh, I'm Robert Reyes. I'm the founder of Startup Circle and a partner with Plug and Play San Diego. Three things I just want you guys to remember about Plug and Play. I'll give you three numbers. One is 200, the other one is 1.8, and the last one is 10. Well, what does that mean in regards to Plug and Play? We have put over 200 companies through our centers around the world. Uh, we have our main centers in Silicon Valley. 
uh, what, the 1.8 is that we've put in $1.8 billion of investment through those companies, uh, through our raising and our own fund. And the last piece, the 10, has to do that we've been in San Diego since last year, and 10 of those companies are part of that, that center, that, that network. So I encourage you to learn more about us. Have a uh, great rest of the morning. And um, again, uh, love the discussion, and uh, look forward to all of us just keep working together. Gabby, my partner in the back, and Alex, uh, we're just thrilled to just see San Diego just grow uh, since I came back in 2006. So good morning to you all. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sandra De Souza. I am the administrator at the Moxie Center at UCSD. We are an educational center and teaching incubator, and it is free and open to all students at UCSD. The students keep 100% of the IP. The university is completely hands-off, and we've worked very hard to make sure that happens. We provide resources such as the lab space, the workbenches, the tools. We also provide mentorship for the students, both on and off campus advisors. And so we encourage um, the advisors and professionals, entrepreneurs from off campus and from the community to volunteer their time with us. These volunteers can either hold office hours on campus at our center, and I'll make sure I arrange parking for them. And it is very important for our visitors. And. Um, we have funding, we provide funding for our students, and we provide networking opportunities such as these events. Today, I have two students from the incubator here with me. They will be at the table back there, so if you want to talk to them about their experience at the center, you may do so. We also have a table outside where I can s explain more about the center. We have been open since January of last year, so we are a baby incubator, I'd like to call it. And we have t currently 19 teams with 25 teams overall that have gone through the center. Currently, we are working towards a Zon competition that's happening in May of this year, and we are piloting an entrepreneurship workshop program for our students who will participate actively um, for eight weeks. And that is all I have. Thank you. Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Kara Bortone, head of company sourcing for Janssen Labs. That's Johnson & Johnson's healthcare incubator located right here in, well, not so sunny today, San Diego. Our mission is to break down many of the barriers of forming a healthcare company and to deliver transformational healthcare solutions to patients. We've created a capital efficient environment with over 70 pieces of shared equipment, also specialized infrastructure and a team that takes care of the day-to-day -day operations that you can focus on progressing your research. Space options range from a single bench top to large and small, um, bi basically biology and chemistry suites. Um, and we're under flexible deal terms so that you can pay for the space you need when you need it and adjust as your business grows. Jensen Labs is a no strings attached model designed to foster long term relationships with the healthcare innovators. Last but not least, we have a variety of programs, which I've seen several of you at, um, that are designed to keep you educated, informed, and, ed and on how to bring your products to commercialization. In the words of Dr. Paul Janssen, patients are waiting, and Janssen Labs is here to help. Thank you. Good morning. I first want to say thank you, Raquel Cunningham, for having us here. Um, did you know that women start businesses twice as fast as men? Good morning, I'm Sylvia Mom, and I'm founder of Hera Labs, a business accelerator for female entrepreneurs. We offer quick start, action-oriented um, action workshops in a small group environment for ideation and growth phase companies. Our signature program is the Idea Potential Lab, where we flesh out a new business idea including projections and a pitch in just 16 hours. Our alumni span from women developing apps, who's here in the audience, to those creating consumer products like a new purse, to those growing service-based businesses. We focus on supporting those who target timely profitability versus venture funding. While these businesses are not as coveted or shiny and bright, um, they are the engines of our economy. Through collaboration with the incubators and accelerators here, let's build an even stronger San Diego ecosystem than Forbes could ever imagine. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, everyone. I'm Janine Jacobson, and I run the Founder Institute here in San Diego. The Founder Institute is a 16-week program, one night a week, that helps early-stage entrepreneurs launch their company through real-world training, company building assignments, and with a network of CEO mentors. Uh, we'll be starting recruitment for our fall session, and come and see me if you've been thinking about starting a company. I'm over on the right-hand side of the room. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, I'd like to ask the panel the following. It's conceded that the real value, I think, of the incubator accelerator model is the network effect of the mentors. How many did you get? Were they great? Did you get enough? Over too much? Give me your thoughts on the mentor experience, starting with the person who was willing to give up a little equity for brains. Um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it. it was. Uh, in Techstars, it was overwhelming. That first month, we, we got into Techstars, we had a business, we had customers, we had things to take care of, but we were spending our entire day meeting with mentors and ridiculously powerful potential but customers. But you met, and, and what was the goal? Because yeah. one of the problems the community faces is, for, for example, Connect has 110 or 130 EIRs. There is no shortage of unemployed people like myself looking to give advice. Was it valuable, beside meeting them and getting a business card? Uh, incredibly valuable. I mean, you're sitting there, and even if it's just 30 minutes, you're having a conversation with a guy who has built, you know, billion-dollar companies twice. Okay, Mike. And, and it's a personal conversation, and he's very interested in what you're Love doing. It. So, yeah. Evo. Evo. We were assigned a specific advisor, mentor, uh, a healthcare technology executive in the medical field, a very successful individual. We ended up making him an advisor of our company and giving him directly some equity. So again, I like... You got stiffed, Rory. So I like the model that, uh, you know, you're not giving it to a general organization, you're giving it to the, some, someone that really contributed. And in addition, we had Rory, the Admiral, that would review with us every month. There was a lot of good learning and uh, mentorship in that. So we found it very valuable. So you had one or two specifics and enough others. That's right. Mitch. We had some fantastic advisors. Uh, we also, out of the group of panelists that were, or the, really the mentors that we were given through Connect, um, many of them became investors in the company, which was wonderful for us because then, you know, not only were they helping us, but they also believed so much in it that they So were that led to the next question. You all had incubator experiences. Tell us the truth. How much money did you raise or have you raised to date for your company, companies? And what amount or what percent or how important was getting it from the incubator? I'll, I'll maybe jump in there. I think, um, you know, I think Active raised hundreds of millions of dollars in the, in the days that it went through, uh, maybe more specifically. And with the Bump Network, we've raised north of six. Um, from VCs or angels? Uh, we went uh, private family offices and private investors and... So those are angels? Well, you know, Eric Schmidt, who's with Tomorrow Ventures, it's his private family fund. He's the chairman of Google. He's an investor through his private family fund. So it's a step up from an angel. Okay. But we also raised from a significant number of angels. And did any of those come to you through introductions of mentors at the incubator? They did. They, they did. did? They did, absolutely. Great. A plus. Mike. Um, we've raised. Oops. That's a good. That's a good sign. Remember, the whole the, the game is the network effect of who you meet. It is not renting a desk. I mean, I'm I'm convinced of that. Whether you give equity or not, that is. And if you read the Forbes article and Kaufman's reports ad nauseum, the value is the Rolodex that you have access to. I mean, that's the game. It might be a dark sentence, but that's the truth. Mike. Yeah, we've raised a uh, little over seven and a half million all from uh, angel investors, high net worth individuals, many of which were in uh, the, the network of myself, our chairman of the board, uh, people we had made money for in the past. Um, I would also say that of that seven and a half million, probably 15, 20% came through the incubator as a result of uh, meeting us. And I'd give, again, the credit that some of the people that were looking at this opportunity were uh, extremely impressed as they toured our operation and the incubator itself to say, hey, these guys were part of an elite group that got here. 
uh, there must be something we ought to take a look at. So about 20% of your dough came from direct relationships developed at Evo. That's right. Excellent. Al. Yeah, so we raised uh, 1.25 million VCs and angels. So um, far. Yes. And you've turned down our money twice. <laughs> Desperate to give him a check. Was but one of those he wants a 28 <laughs> pre. Yes, go ahead. It's nothing personal. Um. <laughs> Hope you fall on your face. No. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Um, so some of that came from our mentors and advisors through the program, uh, but so the that's thing important. Mentors and advisors in the program were also investors in the 1.2. Yes, and the thing that actually, in relatively unrelated, but the thing I'm most proud of is we raised half our money from here in San Diego, and more, most of our investors were from San Diego. So. Thank you. So there's 16 incubators next door. Here's the next question: How would you tell? How would you do? How would you go about picking? How do you do the picking? You, you, you got to pick one. How did you pick yours? And what do you think the process should be? I'm going somewhere at the end, you'll see, in picking. Well, for, uh, go ahead. For, for me, I wasn't aware of 16 incubators. At the time we went through the program, uh, we had heard of Evil Nexus and it had just started. We met Rory in the parking lot one day and uh, learned a little bit more about it and, uh, you know, long interview process and eventually got in. So I don't know that there was a lot of choice back then. Okay. Mitch? Each, each company is going to have a unique set of needs at the time. And I would probably go through an evaluation process and looking at the, the pros and cons of each incubator, the you know, relevancy of the networks that they're associated with to your technology or biotech. Um, or production manufacturing company. So I would sort of look at the resume of the folks involved with the uh, company, and um, that would be you know a lot of. Diligence. Did you feel like you know got that. enough mentorship, and did mentors invest in your in Bump? They did. They absolutely did. And okay. it was it was a, a, it's one of the most supportive environments. I, you compare it to universities. If you go to a university and you go out to a corporation or an investor, and you're a university student, you have this cape that you're wearing because they want to help you because you're a student. If you are so-and-so not associated with an incubator, you, you lose a cape. And when you're in, and you have an incubator affiliated with you or behind you, you've really reached out to the world and said, you know what, I need help. I'm with an incubator. I need help. And so that kind of diffuses the situation a little bit. So incubators are, are a great way to wear a cape and okay. get some Okay. Here's a quick question. It's easy. It's a, this is the famous, you know, the venture question, which is, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> other than rewatching the 47 episodes of Breaking Bad. <laughs> Mitch, what's the biggest challenge you face in the next 90 days at Bump? We're in a very fortunate position now to be choosing our Series C investor and having gone through dilutive bloodbaths in the past with prior <laughs> ventures, um, it's really the negotiation of various Rights. I, I assume dilutive bloodbath blood is a legal term for venture financing. I think so. Uh, well, I don't know. Actually, I have, to talk, I have to talk to the Gunderson guys. It, it depends. It but depends. the but point I is, have, you, you have some cards this time. Correct, correct. Right. And, you know, I've been in a room where people have actually literally said within the last three weeks, we will, um, you know, we know that you'll get a valuation of X on the West Coast and you'll get a valuation of Y on the East Coast. And West Coast was higher by almost 20%. Um, but then they continued to tell us the 20 reasons why we needed to take their East Coast Got it. capital. Mike, what, what's 90, next 90 days for Crisy? Next 30 days is filing the 510K with the FDA. So believe me, uh, I was up at 2.30 uh, this morning thinking about that. <laughs> and it, it does keep us up uh, day, night, and weekends. OK, Al. Yeah, so I think uh, having raised a seed round and looking at the future being a potential A round, which as many of you probably know is probably the hardest round that you will ever raise by a long shot, um, is making sure that I steer the company in a way that gets us to the point when, when we're ready to raise that A round, we can do it and it's clear and it's easy. And it's not that we're raising money because we need it, it's because we're raising money because we want to go faster. And so that's where I have to get our company. Outstanding. So I'm going to wind it up with one uh, thought, and then maybe time for one question, maybe two not. You want to come up? We'll see. So try this. So I thought a long time about these 16 incubators in this community, and um, I, uh, the first digit in my age is a six. 
So I am a big fan of Billy Crystal, who says, uh, after he's, he just turned 65 and wrote a book, says, never waste an erection. So what I'm going to tell you is this. I'm going to challenge the community, CEO, Connect, and particularly Connect. I'd like to chat, and I'm going to ask the, the audience. Here's the issue. There's 16 disparate incubators, each of them with a story to tell, and each story is unique and valuable. I'd like to suggest that we do a better job of creating a database of a, if, 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 if Connect was an incubator without walls, then what I'm going to ask the new CEO is that what about putting all 16 in a database that you can access, all the investors, all the people, I'm being given the hook, right? The hook? Is it okay? You don't believe in it? Do you think you can get up faster earlier than me? No, but I want to... www.sdvg.org slash incubators. Yeah, but It'll but be up next week. We have information about all 20 programs. <laughs> Titus always gets the last word. <laughs> nice. We're not done yet. So don't get up like that guy or else I'll call you. I can't see who that is. Okay, so... Um, all right, our, our last group of, of incubators, come on up, because we're going to have one more set of commercials, so you're up now, Rory, okay? Um, those of you who think I saved the best for last, well, the reality is we went in reverse alphabetical order, so um, that's kind of how we, we, we ended up here, but uh, we do want everyone to know what is available. We, one, of the, one of the great byproducts of, of this program this month has been this resource which we've created that'll be accessible through the Venture Group website, which is a listing and description of all the programs uh, here in San Diego, so that, that will be up. Uh, we literally have been getting material in all week, so it's not fully, fully built and, and baked. Um, while I'm on the subject of the website, for those of you who don't know, I tweet almost every day through LinkedIn, which now has 1,700 group members, through Twitter, which has 1,400 followers, or even Facebook, and you can keep tabs on what's going on in our ecosystem in 60 seconds a day just by looking at what comes through that, that tweet. So with that, I'm going to ask our last group of commercials to come up. Rory. I'm actually going to yield about 10 seconds of my time to Dave Titus. Uh, has the De Venture Group had more energy since Dave Titus came on board? <laughs> Terrific job here, Dave. Uh, I can put up statistics all day long, and statistics, statistics can be very uh, misleading at times. But let me give you a couple of examples uh, of some interesting incubator startups. Admiral Davis and I were in the Starbucks on Sorrento Valley Road in Mira Mesa having a coffee, talking about starting a new incubator, pro bono incubator, and sitting next to us is Mark Bowles and Michael Labrizi. They overheard us, we knew them from a former life, and they asked us what we were doing, we told them we're doing a free incubator, we asked them what they were doing, they said, hey, we're going to start a company called EcoATM, how can we get into your incubator? It's free. So that's how it started, uh, out of a, basically a Starbucks in a, plastic, in a uh, cardboard box. But uh, another company that's made the news lately, um, and I'm sorry we didn't get better coverage of it in San Diego, was Tomnod. And this is a great example of a tech transfer out of UCSD. Uh, yes, there can be tech transfers out of UCSD. <laughs> and uh, Cal IT2, and this came to us from that organization, and uh, they develop crowdsourcing software that's used now to try to locate the Malaysian flight. And they've been in the news a lot. They were acquired last year by Digital Globe. And uh, these, are, these are some companies that we've incubated that have been really meaningful, I think, and changed change things. Uh, one last uh, plug, and that's for Portfolium. <laughs> so um, when your kids are trying to find a job out of high school, uh, trying to find a job out of college, LinkedIn really doesn't work. Really doesn't work. It's for 40-year-olds and above. There's a company called Portfolium that's making some great progress with the schools here in this town and, and throughout the UC system. So have your kids go to Portfolium. 
My nieces and nephews do. They believe in it. Let's get a great new start out of it. Portfolio. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Kevin Lustig, and I'm one of the co-founders of Biotech and Beyond. And Biotech and Beyond is a nonprofit life science incubator based up in Carlsbad, right, at, right by Thermo Fisher in the big biotech cluster up in North County. And this is one situation where the, the rent might actually be important because often it's very difficult to start a life science company because you require very expensive equipment. And what we've done up at Biotech and Beyond is get people from the, the, from the community to donate equipment. We've fixed it up, we've set it up, we have about a million dollars worth of basic <coughs> lab equipment, centrifuges, plate readers, uh, pretty much anything you need to do stem cell biology, uh, biomarker discovery, really any life science project. And uh, we're kind of unique in the sense that the city of Carlsbad has donated the building to us and we can pass those savings on to the startup company. So for $600 you can come in and get a 10-foot dedicated bench and run uh, and use all the shared equipment and essentially start a, start a life science company. It's probably the cheapest way to start a life science company around. We're sort of the poor man's version of Janssen Labs, I think is how I like to think about it. We currently have uh, seven startup <coughs> companies, uh, including companies doing Alzheimer's drug discovery. We've got people doing biomarker discovery. We've got gene expression technologies. And we have one company doing 3D printing for life science companies. So again, we're up in Carlsbad. Uh, come see me if you're interested. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Ruprecht von Butler. I'm responsible for business creation and development programs at Connect. Connect is a almost 30 year old accelerator or an incubator without walls, however you want to put that, uh, that assists innovators and entrepreneurs to create businesses and develop them. Uh, this is done through our amazing staff that runs about uh, 23 programs and 365 events per year, all aimed to help entrepreneurs to succeed. Several of our entrepreneurs are here in the, in the room, so I thank you for being with us. Um, the way we do this is primarily through our Springboard program. Springboard is a free mentoring program. Uh, we have about uh, uh, 600 uh, mentors, and several of them are here today. So thank you for being here. And uh, the Springboard program uh, exists since 1993, it has assisted more than 3,000 companies. We tracked those companies uh, back to 2005 and just found that uh, about uh, 371 of those have graduated, 65% uh, are still operating. More than half of them were able to raise money. Overall through the program, uh, $1.1 billion raised. And just in 2013, we had about 100 companies that were able to raise $100 million. The companies uh, all across life science, technology, clean tech, sports innovation, and uh, consumer products. One of our great success stories is here today, this is Bump Networks. Uh, it's a company that, as you heard, will emerge from stealth very soon, but the amazing thing that over the last 12 months they were able to go from zero revenues to about five million. So I hope we were able to help a little bit there. Uh, my plaque to you is, uh, all the entrepreneurs and innovators here, come see us and uh, join Connect and join the Springboard program and let us help you, thanks. Hi, my name is uh, Maggie Felix and I am with CyberHive. CyberHive is a shared workspace and incubator for startup technologies and cybersecurity companies um, in downtown San Diego. Uh, CyberHive is part of a larger organization, CyberTech, which is the nation's leading cyber business network. CyberHive operates on four principles. The first one, sustainability, in order to be able to help companies continue to grow well into the future. Um, we believe in a sustainable model. Um, the second is um, job creation in San Diego. The third, we're strict but kind with our companies. And fourth, um, collaboration or better yet convergence. So in order to build the best CEOs and companies here in San Diego, we believe it's important to work together to um, share best practices and um, so with that, today we have offered all the other incubators and accelerators and shared workspaces here today um, our CyberTech membership. So we encourage everyone to come by the CyberHive 
check it out. Um, you know, let's work together to continue to build some of the best technologies and companies here in San Diego. So thanks for being here. Hi, my name is Ping, and four years ago, as a lonely entrepreneur, got together with some friends, turned a second-story upstairs garage into a co-working center, now equipped with a solar roof, creating a net-zero environment and a cafe on the bottom, all on Convoy Street, in the middle of some of the best authentic and affordable food in San Diego. <laughs> and now, we've grown to over two dozen startups, a dozen meetup groups, and half a dozen non-profit and socially oriented organizations, including a pro bono legal services firm, and the Fab Lab that has 3D printers and laser cutters where you can build stuff. So now we have become an open grassroots innovation village because it takes a village to grow a company. But to build hard stuff, you don't just need a village, you need nations. And so with our friends south of the border, we have created one of the world's first binational hardware and hard tech accelerators in the world. And so this is where you can come if you have gadgets and other things that you want to build. You can use Fab Lab, you can use Answer, you can use The Village. And together, we can build something. Don't be a lonely entrepreneur. <laughs> He gets the award. Really good. <laughs> I, I think we have a speaker for San Diego. I mean, that was awesome. So, uh, like Ping, uh, it, it does take a village. And looking at this room, it reminds me of an SDVG event last year where it was a partner at some big fund in the Valley. And he came and said, looking around the room at 7 a.m., saying, This reminds me of Silicon Valley in the 80s when we had to collaborate and we had to work together. So, if we're Silicon Valley in the 80s, I'll take that. I think we have some amazing stuff happening here. We don't have to, we don't have to be Silicon Valley, but we could be much, a much better San Diego. Um, as Ping said, it does take a village. It takes uh, the Daves and Rory's and Mitch and Al and Mike and Neil and... King of Eat, what do you uh, do? You got 60 okay. seconds. <laughs> they, they all went more than 60 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay, so we are an early stage analytics accelerator. We want to partner up as early as possible with uh, entrepreneurs and domain experts in their field of expertise, whether it's healthcare analytics, weather analytics, energy analytics. We build companies, we build teams, and we are active. Uh, we invest, we help you get sales, because as my partner Blaze says, sales cures all. And so many times we see people uh, deferring sales and just kind of saying, we have to raise money, we have to raise money. That might work in other places here, we want to help you get to sales as fast as possible because every dollar of sales will attract $10 in investment. And that'll help grow the ecosystem and uh, have more eco ATMs and Tom Nods and, and let's rebuild and let's keep doing it. So if you're looking to get in the analytics space for your vertical, we have a platform uh, that we can bring to market and help you do it faster and better. Thank you and look us up on the website. Okay, th this has been so awesome today. I, I want to thank, so these are three busy guys up here. Neil's not, but the rest of them are. They're running real companies. They got 510Ks. They got Series C to close. They got Series A to close. I can't believe you're only on Series A. Al, I mean, because you guys have been rocking it. So it's just, it's exciting to me to see all of this you know, we're not 12 incubators of which, all of which are doing blah, blah, come in for 90 days and you can start a company. I mean, you can be wireless health, you can be life science, you can be software, you can make stuff, which is really cool. And so, um, as I said, our, our incubators are going to stay around if you want to talk more with them. Um, they will be here. Um, let me go back. Next month, we will buy you a drink. Not a Bloody Mary for breakfast, as someone suggested this morning. But no, next month, we are going to be at the evening. We're going to be over at Qualcomm. We have Salesforce.com coming, Qualcomm Ventures, Amgen, Biomed Ventures, talking about corporate venturing. So it'll be a, a fun evening. Uh, bring a friend, bring a colleague, bring a date, whatever you like. 
um, we'll have a good time. It's a great, great setting, and, and we hope you'll join us. Um, see, Mike is in a hurry. <laughs> He's got work to do. Um, anyways, I'd like to thank Neil for stepping in once again. Um, appreciate that, Neil. Um, our sponsors, Gunderson, uh, Square One, Cabrillo, EDC, as I said. Let's keep it in the network. Let's build the network. Support our sponsors. They'll support you. Hang out for the breakouts, and we look forward to seeing you in April. Thank you.